there are people out there, and those people are you, and you're listening to Should We Be Talking About This? Am I attracted to this? <laughs> <laughs> This is Should We Be Talking About This? And I'm Rachel. And I'm Chance. And this is episode 79. We're getting up there in the podcast and digits. Numbers. That's a lot. Numbers. I thought we were going to do a thing where we said it again. Again. Nope. Too late. Oh it's God. too late. Do we have anything this week to talk about? It's just a regular week. Nothing's going on. Nothing crazy. Hey, we're going to be at a podcast festival. Yeah, the True Crime Podcast Festival. Yes, in Dallas. It's not going to be until August, right? August yeah. 26th or 27th. I don't know. We posted something about it. We'll keep you guys updated. But if you're in the Dallas area or even close. Yeah, check like it out. It's a whole meet and greet thing. It's not just us. You can go check out a bunch of other podcasts. And I think there's a live event. It's at a hotel. Yeah. Banquet. Thing. You can check out the website. True Crime Podcast Festival dot com. Yeah, come see us. They have a list there of, uh, and actually this year they're adding paranormal Ooh. podcasts to the uh, mix as well. Yeah, we would love to meet you guys. It'll be awesome. Yeah, but anything else? No. Okay, good. Let's get into it. I want to go second because mine doesn't have any sad stuff. I've been going first a lot. I can go first. I just think that yours is going to be more depressing than mine. Okay. I know what your topic is. Yeah. So do you want me to go first? No, I'll go first. Okay. My topic is on Russian deaths that were most likely done by Putin. Yes. You said you were going to do this one. I'm excited about it. Yeah. So for those that don't know, I'm going to talk a little bit about Putin. Oh, you're going to give a history lesson? Uh, It's very, very brief, but it's specific to Putin. Okay. So, Vladimir Putin, he was born in Leningrad, which is now St. Petersburg, in 1952. Does it throw you off that there's a St. Petersburg, Russia? Because I always think of St. Petersburg, Florida. Oh, yeah. I guess it doesn't <laughs> throw you off. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> there's your answer. So, Putin ended up studying law at Leningrad State University. After graduating in 1975, he became a KGB officer. He resigned and got into politics. He ended up working on the administration for the president, Boris Yeltsin. He worked as director for the FSB, which is what used to be the KGB. Mm -hmm. And the KGB is what? It's like RCIA? They were, no, it was like FBI? their... It, well, kind of like the FBI. It was their state security. Oh, okay. So they were they focused on like counterterrorism and stuff like that. Okay. Well, after that, he became prime minister in 1999... He had to, right? Because Boris Yeltsin... Well, no. He became prime minister while Boris Yeltsin was still president. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But Boris Yeltsin, he ends up resigning right. at the end of 99. Which basically thrust Putin into presidency. Right. Well, then there's an election a few months later, mm -hmm. and he ends up winning officially in 2000. Gotcha. It's always so crazy... To me, that like presidents in other countries don't go for like two terms, like four years total. Like he's been president for twenty two years. Right. He, well, he got stopped briefly. He couldn't run. Uh, I think it was for his third term. He had to step back, but he was immediately stepped back as prime minister. Mm. And step back? Yeah, I said it weird. Okay. And he became president again I gotcha. after that. And then I think he. This isn't official. Okay. But didn't he put into effect that there is no limit now? I have no idea. So he can basically just be president Forever. indefinitely? I wouldn't doubt it. He seems like a crazy narcissist that would definitely do something like that. Yeah. Okay, so a lot of people have not liked what Putin's done since he's been in charge. A lot of news reporters and stuff like that, and they talk about it, and they're kind of vocal. And a lot of these people end up getting killed and and dying mysteriously. Okay. So I'm going to talk about a few people. One is Anna Stepanovna. So Anna was a Russian journalist. She spent a lot of time reporting on human rights violations in Russia. She also worked as a war correspondent for a newspaper reporting from the front lines during the Second Chechen War, mm -hmm. where she talked about all sorts of bad shit that the Russian troops were doing. Mm. This, of course... And she was Russian, right? Yes. Okay. But this made her a prime target for kidnapping. 
that was going on. Reporters were getting kidnapped, and then they would be held as prisoner exchanges later on and stuff. I gotcha, yeah. But she kept reporting. This didn't phase her at all. The president of Russia, when the Second Chechen War started, was Boris Yeltsin. Okay, so I'm going to give a little background on the Chechen War. On the Second Chechen War. Okay. Yeah, because I have no idea what it was fought over. Yeah. So Boris was president. Boris Yeltsin. Putin was prime minister. Basically, there was a series of bombings in Russia where apartment complexes had gotten destroyed, mm-hmm. like they were targeted. And so that was an excuse for Russia to invade Chechnya. Okay. When in reality, they just wanted to gain control of more countries. Right. Because it's like they've been hell-bent on creating a Soviet Union again. Right. Well, this made Putin real popular for invading after these bombings. Right. Do we know if the bombings were really Chechnyan bombs or... Could well, they have been Russian bombs made to get people on Putin's side to attack Chechnya? So there was a lot of reporters that didn't think that this was legit. Okay. And come to find out, I saw an article where the FSB, it was proven through an investigation that they had planted one of the bombs. Mm-hmm. Russia's own security, right. basically. It's the old Kansas City shuffle. Yeah. Anna, like I said, reported on, or she was investigating this stuff at the time. And according to a Russian oligarch, uh, we're going to talk about him a little bit later, Boris Berezovsky. Mm-hmm. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> but according to him, Putin once said that in reference, in re- reference? Reference. In reference to Anna, she would take one in the head if she ever spoke of the bombings. Oh. So I think she might have been onto something. Yeah, for sure. During the Second Chechen War, one of the things that she had reported on Mm -hmm. and she was investigating were these complaints from about 90 Chechen families about these raids from Russian forces on these villages. Uh One grandmother apparently was beaten for 12 days. Holy shit. Yeah, she suffered electric shock. Uh, and she was stuck in a pit for a while, too. Why that grandmother? I don't know. There was other things that were going on, too. This right. was just one specific person she talked to. Okay. And got her story. There were apparently rapes and other things that were going on. Wow. So while she's investigating this, she gets arrested by military officials. This is Anna we're talking about. Right. And she gets beaten. She said that she was led outside into the night by a lieutenant colonel, and he told her that he was going to shoot her. Mm. and it was pitch black. She couldn't see anything, and all of a sudden there was a huge burst of fire. And what had happened was he had walked her right underneath a rocket launcher that was mounted on a truck right when it went off, just Mm. to scare her. That'll do it. Yeah, and that was apparently a mock execution, which I didn't know was a thing. I didn't either. Yeah, apparently whenever you convince somebody that you're going to kill them when you don't have the intention of killing them, that's a mock execution. And what is the purpose to get information out of them? Just to scare people. Oh, okay. I mean, think about this reporter. She has nothing to gain by reporting on her own people, reporting on other Russians who are in this army, her military, and she has everything to lose. Right. So why would we not believe everything that she said? Yeah. In 2002, there were almost a thousand people that were taken hostage in a Moscow theater by Chechnyans. A thousand people? Yeah, almost a thousand. Jesus. Like a theater? Like a movie theater? No, I think this is like a opera. Like an amphitheater? It, a, I don't... I didn't write down the name, but I th- it's a famous theater. Okay, it would make more sense if it was like an amphitheater instead of a movie theater. Yeah. Well, police thought that Anna would be helpful because she used to pass along information during the Second Chechen War right. through families and all sorts of stuff, so they thought she could be helpful. Well, as and a... she was interviewing Chechnyans. Like, yeah. she had an in with both of them. Plus, she was reporting on this terrible shit that Russians did, so they probably trusted her. Yeah. But before she could actually do anything, Russian troops released an unknown chemical agent into the theater to in- incapacitate the terrorists. Uh-huh. And after several hours, all terrorists were killed or captured and over 200 civilians died from the gas. Oh, my God. So Anna, she was really messed up about this situation. Right, because she had the potential to save everyone. Uh-huh. And after investigating it, she figured that the FSB was involved, which is Russia's... KGB. Yes. There was also another incident in Russia where a school 
had been taken hostage, Mm -hmm. all the people inside, and this was over a thousand people. Okay. Well, she was flying to go help negotiate. Right. But she ended up getting sick after drinking some tea that was given to her by a flight attendant. Mm -hmm. She ended up surviving, but many people think that the FSB were involved and that they poisoned her. I no doubt believe that. That school hostage situation ended up with Russian troops launching an assault with rockets and tanks. Uh. And 334 people were killed. Over half of them were children. Oh, my God. It's all the terrible shit that was going on. And this stuff needs to be reported on. And right. they're just doing their job, but they're putting themselves in danger to do it. Mm-hmm. I mean, that shit is literally happening right now. Mm-hmm. So in October of 2006, the exact same day she was fixing to file a new story about torture methods that were being used, she was found dead in the elevator of her apartment building. What? She was shot twice in the chest, once in the head, and the pistol was left there on the floor of the elevator. Weird. Putin announced that there would be an investigation, Mm -hmm. and eventually someone who had absolutely no ties with her at all was convicted. Wow. So not only did he kill this reporter, but he framed some, maybe not innocent person, but some random person. Well, and it might not have even been a random person. It could have been the actual killer, the trigger man. Right, but But he hired them. It was a hired person. For sure. Yeah. Wow. What a giant piece of shit. Uh Uh-huh. Next person, Alexander Litvinenko. Nice. Thank you. It's probably still wrong. (laughs) Yeah, but you said it with conviction. So he was a former FSB officer. He knew too much. Uh Uh-huh. He specifically specialized in organized crime. But in 1998, he, along with some other officers, they held a press conference where they were wearing masks and dark glasses. Mm -hmm. And they accused their superiors of ordering assassinations and kidnappings. Mm. One assassination plot that they were talking about was on Boris Berezovsky. I oh. mentioned him. I mentioned him earlier. He's he was the guy that said Anna would take one in the head. I got you. Yeah. Yeah. But there was a an assassination plot against him. Well, Putin takes it upon himself to fire Alexander mm-hmm. after him coming out and talking against his own police. Right. And a year later, he was arrested on charges for exceeding the authority of his position. Which sounds like some trumped up bullshit. Right, for sure. Well, he ends up getting acquitted. Then he ends up getting rearrested for those same charges. I don't understand how that happens. Right. But he ends up getting dismissed in 2000 again. So after all of this, Alexander, he leaves Russia with his family to go to London, where mm-hmm. he got granted asylum. And he worked as a journalist, a writer, and a consultant for the British intelligence services. So he's kind of like a James Bond guy. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think he was quite like that, but... He also wrote a couple books where he accused Russian secret services of staging the Russian apartment bombings. Yes. And other terrorist stuff that was done to bring Putin into power, basically. Oh, wow. Yeah. Also, in another article he wrote, he accused Putin of being a pedophile, and the KGB had destroyed video footage that they had had when Putin was director. Wow. After Anna's death at the end of 2006, we're talking about the first reporter. Right. After her death, Alexander accused Putin of ordering the assassination. Mm-hmm, which he did. Uh-huh. Well, a couple of weeks later, Alexander got real sick, and he got admitted to a hospital for intensive care. It was found out that Alexander had met with two former FSB agents the day he got sick, mm. and he had drank some tea that was laced with polonium-210, which is one of the most toxic substances to man. On his deathbed, he had a letter written where he accused Putin of ordering the poisoning himself. 22 days after he drank the tea, Alexander was dead. Oh my god, 22 days. Yeah. and the a lot ne- of suffering. It really is. I remember when this was going on during mm-hmm. those 22 days, because I remember on the front page, the, uh, his picture from the hospital bed. Oh my god. And he's bald, because that's one of the symptoms, is you mm. lose hair. And he looked very sick and frail. It was really sad. Well, the next day after he died, Putin said, Mr. Litvinenko is unfortunately not Lazarus. Meaning that he won't come back from the dead? Yes. What a dick. Alexander was buried in a lead-lined casket because of the the radiation poisoning. Wow. An investigation finds out that the two guys he met were responsible for it. 
but the UK couldn't extradite them from Russia because of Russia's constitution. Do we know what poison it was? I mean, it's polonium-210. 